Number nine then from the 2013 Higher Maths Paper 1. Find the value of sine 2x given this triangle including the angle single x. Well, we'll just expand that then. That becomes 2 sine x cos x. You will have to expand it into the form of the single angle because it's only the single angle x that I've got. So it'll be 2 times sine, that's the side without the angle, so it'll be the 1 over the hypotenuse root 5. The cosine, that's the side adjacent to the angle, so that'll be the 2 over the root 5. Multiplying the numerators, 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. Denominators, root 5 times root 5, reconstitutes itself back into 5, so that's 4 fifths. And 4 fifths is answer A. Number 10 then, which of the following is equivalent to this expression? Well, just expand it. That'll be cos 270 cos A, but plus sine 270 sine A. Now, what are the values of these? Now, these are points that you get from the graph, or critical points in the graph. Cosine looks like this, and at 270, it's going to be zero, so that part goes to zero. The sine graph looks like this. At 270, it's down here, so this part's going to come to negative one. So this whole thing will simplify to nothing, just minus. So it'll come to negative the sine of A, which is D. Number 11, a transformation of a graph. So in this one it says, if this is the graph of the original function, what would be the graph of this alteration to it, transformation? Well, there's two transformations, one outside, one inside. The outside transformation simply says the new y-coordinates will be the negative of the other ones, of the old ones. So that means it's going to be upside down. So that instead of having a maximum, then a minimum, it should have a minimum, then a maximum. Well, that's still B, C, or D. This internal transformation with X actually produces a shift. The opposite of this, this will be a shift forward. So this is going to shift right, as long as that K is a positive number, and it is. So if you're subtracting them out, it's going to shift right by K. So it'll be upside down and then go forward. So these turning points are all going to go forward to the right. And that only happens in one, that happens in B. Number 12. You're given two vectors in the form of multiples of these unit vectors. You have to find the magnitude of the sum of these two vectors. Well, I think, first of all, I'd rather just write them as column vectors. Notice there's a j missing. I've got 3 for i, nothing for j, and 2 for k. And g, it's got all three components there. It's got 2, 4, and 3. So if I want f plus g, it's just going to be add the two together. So it'll be 3 and 2 is 5. Nothing in 4 is 4, and 2 and 3 is 5 again. So that to get the length, the magnitude of that vector, it'll be the square root of the squares of the components. Pythagoras in three dimensions. It'll be the 5 squared, the 4 squared, and the 5 squared. That's the square root of 25, 16, and 25, which equals the square root of 50 plus 16, 66. So we're looking for the American solution to this. Thank you to Mr Moran for that. And that solution is C.